how's it going? Long time no see. I'm not dead, guys. So here's what I'm thinking. The most expensive part of a laser engraving machine is the laser, obviously. It can cost like 500 bucks for a 100 watt laser. But in this world we live in, we've got high energy light dumping on top of us at all times. Now, according to Kiora, <laughs> at the equator on a sunny day, the sun is dumping a kilowatt of power per square meter. I want to harness that, man. I want to harness that and put it on a CNC machine. So today, we're going to take the little boy killing ants with a magnifying glass and stick it on a CNC machine. Let's do it. So I'm really just going to be winging this thing, and I'm going to start with the actual CNC machine. I think the best way to keep focus from the sun is to have a fixed gantry and a moving bed. And we just need an X and Y bed. So I think it's going to be something like this. So we got our X and we got our Y. Let's build a frame for this. Check out my nice high quality sanding belt. All right, we got ourselves a bit of a frame. I've clamped one of these linear rails in place. Now I just gotta drill and tap these holes. And it may be a bad idea to be tapping 065 material. That definitely won't hold anything. But there's so many holes, man. The load is spread out evenly. I don't know, I'ma do it. If it doesn't work out, well, you'll see. Ah, uh, so I missed a couple holes. Who cares? It's okay. I've got my linear rails mounted on both sides. For our other axis, I've made these little plates. And these go on here, like so. Beautiful. And then for our other axis, I've installed our linear rail on there. I can just weld this in place. I'm gonna be squaring this up using my eyeballs. <laughs> because this is a pretty low stake CNC machine. Beautiful! Look at that! Okay, I'll weld it all the way up now. Now to pull this thing around, we need to install our stepper mounts. Most people would clean the paint off, but... Time is money, man! So, we got our basic thing together. Now what we gotta worry about are the idler pulleys and the belts. And looking right here, this belt needs to go right through this tube. So, I'm gonna cut a hole in there. That'll do. So the first idler, just got an idler pulley jammed between two plates with lock nuts and whatever. And that goes right there. Now for the second idler, I know you guys are gonna laugh at me for this, but Yeah, try not to laugh at me for that. And I guess shiny and in focus is just impossible. Whatever, you get the point. Don't look at it again, I'm embarrassed. Now then, in order to hold the belts, I made this little piece. I'll have a little nubbin on the end of the belt and I can just stick it into these things. You know, like all the cheap Chinese 3D printers do. But this will just go in here. I gotta kind of force it into place, I think. You like that little Casey Neistat transition? So it seems I've lost some footage here, but I assume it went something like this. So, we got that part done. Now let's go work on this part. That's a fairly standard transition around here if yeah, you didn't notice. And in order to do that, I've got this absolutely gorgeous piece of one by two. That'll mount on top of there. Get out of here. We'll make a little skeleton of a bed. Kind of like that. Okay, fine. I'll clean it up. Well, that made everything gross. Alrighty. Got my bed installed. Everything moves pretty freely. Not bad for a one-day CNC machine, huh? So our spoil board will just be mounted on top of this with self-tappers. And the steppers will just move the bed around. That way we can have a fixed thing for our engraver. So, I guess it's time we work on that fixed thing. So, this is going to be the arm that holds our lens. And that 
it just goes right there. And if I measured right, this won't hit. All right, we're starting to get somewhere, guys. So I added a little plate onto the end of this little dingly arm with two tapped holes in it. And for the lens, I found this little telescope at Goodwill. And this seems to be like a four and a half inch focal length lens. But I do want to be able to try out different lenses and whatever, so I'll have this all removable and adjustable. So, I think I'm going to modify this guy to be able to mount on here with easy access to the screws and move up and down so we can really dial in the focal length. So, sorry Mr. Telescope. Sweet! Well, that's kind of the machine just about done. So I guess now we gotta tackle the biggest problem, which is actually having this thing be consistent. And I got a plan. We're gonna start by making a frame. Now I've got some 3D printed parts. Wait, 3D printed? I got some plasma cut parts. This guy gets a piece of round stock. This guy gets our wiper motor. This guy gets a bearing block. And this guy gets nothing. Don't worry about it. It just goes on the motor. Let's get these installed. We got some, we got some tilt. Now then, gotta figure out the, what's that? Yaw? I think it's yaw. Um, I'll be back. Well, hey there, old truck. <clears throat> Ooh, you're lucky it's easier to get to the scrap yard than to your wiper motor. I don't know why I was thinking so hard about how I'm gonna do this other axis. I can literally do it exactly the same as the last one. So, got me a new wiper motor, spared my truck, made all the same parts. Oh, that's hot. Let's throw this thing together. Well, it's all together. We've got quite the monstrosity here. So we've got our two axes for following the sun and a CNC machine on top. I think this is gonna be pretty sweet. So before electronics, I've got one last thing to install, which is this. So I 100% stole this design from Great Scott. Put a little linky poo up there for you. But this, this is like an X block and each of these holes in the base gets a photoresistor. That way we can program this thing to where if this side is dark, it'll move this way. If this side is dark, it'll move that way and so on to where this will always be pointing directly at the sun. Makes sense, huh? Now this guy is gonna go right there. So that's that. Now all that's left to do is install our steppers and belts and do the electronics. Maybe I'll do a cute little animation. I, I don't know, we'll see. I'll, I'll see you once that's done. So this machine is gonna consist of two parts. One being the solar tracker, the other being the CNC machine. Now for the CNC machine, the animation, we got problems. Problems that you probably saw coming. These little wiper motors don't have enough power to move this whole heavy old thing around. So what I'm gonna do, I printed out these little sprocket gears on the plasma cutter. I'm just gonna do a, use a gear ratio to- Hold up! I'm interrupting your interruption. The sprockets didn't work. They worked in that the motors were able to drive it, but it was too jerky. Sometimes it gets a bit jerky, but- <laughs> So, I went ahead and replaced them with these lead screws, if you will. So as you can see, it follows the light wherever that is. 
You can probably tell it's a little bit wobbly. I used what I had, so I use these self-centering pillow block bearings, which kind of wobble a little bit. Uh, you know, I'm sick of tweaking this thing. It's good enough, and it's going to be moving so slow where I'm not even going to notice. Hopefully. And yeah, it's pretty slow. But so is the sun. So I think it'll be fine. Anyway, back to your uh, regularly scheduled animation. Well, that was rude. Where were we? The CNC machine is just going to be controlled by my CNC controller that I made in a previous video. Done. Easy. Now for the solar tracker, it will be controlled by an Arduino Uno. And the Arduino will take the reading from our four photoresistors and create an average of the top, left, bottom and right side of our X block. And if one side is greater than its opposing side, then it will move in that direction. And in order to choose the direction on our motor, I didn't have any motor drivers laying around. So what I did is I made an H bridge using relays. For that, the motor is just hooked up to the common of two relays with the normally closed contact attached to ground and the normally open to our voltage. And to change the direction of the motor, we just change which relay is flicked on. And with that on both motors plus our photoresistors, we can have this thing constantly tracking the sun or any light source, really. All right, it's go time. We'll plug it in, see where it ends up. We may need to give it a little bit of assistance in the form of uh, blocks because it's still a little early. The sun's low. Give it a little bit of help. All right, that's pretty good. Wow, ain't nothing to do but to cut some stuff. the sun drew a little self-portrait of itself so the program just ended and kept burning right here if you can't tell but otherwise everything else looks pretty close so it looks like the sunglasses may have shifted like that way a little bit but it might be my eyes deceiving me I don't know I mean this CNC machine is not the most rigid thing in the world so yeah whatever either way man it worked let's let's try another It cut some little ants. Instead of destroying them, we're creating them. We've come full circle, guys. Beautiful. Wait, wh what are you doing? No! Well, it works, sorta. <laughs> it's a pretty good prototype. Now, obviously, this is all very thrown together, so we do got our, you know, wiggly bed, and the sun tracker is wobbly wiper motor, so it doesn't work the best, but. You know, as a proof of concept, man, this is pretty sweet. I'm pleased with it, man. Now, as for improvements, a better lens so we can get, you know, less fat lines. Might even be able to cut with a big enough lens. A more rigid CNC setup and uh, actually properly planned sun tracker. Maybe a variable shutter and maybe we could even get it to do rasters. That'd be sweet. I don't know. I think it's a cool idea and I'm definitely going to be taking it further. So look out for that one. Now, to address the elephant in the room, if you will. You may have noticed my frequency of uploading has gone down quite a bit. Uh, that's because at the beginning of this year, I quit my job and I started my own business and it has been busy. Now, I shouldn't complain about that, it is a good thing, but it, it sucks that I've kind of like dropped off of the YouTube thing a little bit. With my old job, I was like a well-oiled machine working full-time there and the rest of the time on YouTube and everything was just fine, but I'm still kind of trying to find that flow with my new work schedule, if you will. So, Bear with me, I'm not going anywhere. I still really like doing this, but it may take a little while for me to get my grips. 
So in the meantime, until I can really, you know, figure out how to partition my time properly, I'm going to suspend payments on Patreon. I, I know you guys are too nice. You're going to tell me not to do that, but it's for me, not for you. <laughs> and my upload frequency will likely be a little lower for the upcoming future, but soon enough, I will get my grip and I'll be right back at it full force. Hopefully. <laughs> just just know I'm not going anywhere. But yeah, either way, that's that for this. If you like what you saw, leave a good old danger. Think about subscribing and thank you for watching. Hey, look at that, just while I was talking to the camera there, it burnt all the way through. So cutting with this is not out of the question. That's pretty sweet, man. Hey, if that ain't a teaser for part two, then uh, yeah, I don't know what is.